my name is Amber Dubois Shepherd, Manager of Education and Outreach at the Maybe Gare Museum of Art. Today we'll be talking about different styles of cradle board and also where cradle board is represented in our Native American collection here at the Maybe Gare. Um, I actually was able to acquire some pieces that are actually my family pieces. Um, I myself being Native American, um, I'm enrolled Navajo, but I'm a descendant of Sac and Fox and Prairie Band Potawatomi tribe, uh, tribal heritage. So I decided to um, ask my family for my cradle board back um, to show to all of you today. I also have a small one I borrowed from my mother as well. My mother's Navajo, so I brought some more um, Navajo styled um, cradle boards and we can talk about the differences as we look at the other cradle boards that are represented here. So, um, but the first thing I kind of want to talk about too is in one of our last videos, we talked about um, Navajo rugs. And I did manage while I was there getting cradle boards for my family, I managed to pull my rug because I talked about in the last video. And this is my rug that I made when I was probably about 10 years old under the teachings of my great grandmother. Um, I won third place at Red Earth for this rug. Um, several years back in 2010 but she came out to Oklahoma and she set up a loom and I got to practice and made my first rug so this is the beginner style rug so you would just practice so you could get your lines all um, spaced out correctly but it was a really fun um, experiment for me as an artist as well so we're going to talk about cradle boards today. Um, with cradle boards, a lot of Native American tribes, this was how they would carry their baby. Um, even today, cradle boards are used by many Native families still today. Um, like I said, I was in a cradle board, so were my brothers, um, and there are still many babies today. And there's all different styles of cradle board. Um, but here we actually, I'm gonna show you this one first. This one is a baby cradle board, but it's actually for, um, it's a child's a toy in a way. This actually belonged to my mother. Um, she let me borrow it, but you would put your baby doll in here and you would tie it down just like you would. So it was kind of like a practice, but this was um, handmade as well um, by various um, crafter. I don't believe it's signed or anything. But this is a simple small one. Here's the, um, this was to protect the baby's head. And once you would tie the baby in, the foot would be here so the baby wouldn't slip out as you're carrying them. So that's just more for a child, um, a toy and a doll. I actually played with this one too when I was a little girl. And then we have the big one. This is actually my cradle board. Um, my cradle board um, was used for when I was a baby, out of my brothers and I, I was the only one who really enjoyed being in the cradle board. Um, a lot of people may think, um, well, how can a baby might get uncomfortable? It actually isn't, it's to help protect them too. So sometimes they would put a pillow in like this one, um, or a long time ago, they may lay down like sheep wool and different things in here, but um, so the baby had comfort back here. Um, and this one also has the, the head protecting here. Um, some of our stories is that the, this may represent the rainbow, which helps bring good things to the baby. I was told that this and this, um, one side is the male and the other side is the female. So there's a male and female styling in the wood um, in representation. And then here's the footboard so the baby won't slip out. Um, in Navajo culture, it was kind of used as a way so your baby would go up, grow up straight, would grow up tall, strong, um, and be re, like kind of reproductive as they got older as well um, in the traditional sense. So with your baby, you would wrap them up kind of like you would today, like a little burrito. You put your baby in here. Hopefully by this point they're asleep and then you could tie them in. And you don't tie it so tight just enough so they're still comfy. And sometimes they don't even notice this if um, they're that asleep. But you would tie them in and then tie the footrest and have it come up. And then you could tie it up here, however tight you'd like. Now, there's different ways. Some people would just lay the baby down. So once you got your baby all done, you gently pick it up and then you would just carry it around like this. 
and you could rock it. Um, if you were busy, sometimes as my mother would be, sometimes I would, um, she would put me on the, on the floor and maybe lean me up against something. You could also wear it on your back. Some women a long time ago when they were harvesting corn or different things could actually make this kind of like a backpack. And you could tie up here or back here, some kind of tie so you could actually hang it on the back side. And hopefully this would protect the baby's head as you were moving around. You could also hang um, the baby from a string here up onto something. So if you're working, um, your child could still see you. Um, sometimes it's just comforting that they know you're still there versus if they wake up upside down looking at the ceiling. So, but like I said, this was my cradle board and I really enjoy it. Um, and I, I, would, I would fight my mom and I'd wanna still lay in it even though my feet were sticking out this far from the cradle board. Um, until my great grandmother said, you're too old for that. So, um, but this is a traditional way of tying your baby down, protecting your baby, having them sleep and be protected. So, and like I said, they're still used today. Now we're actually gonna look at a piece that is in the collection here at the Maybe Gear. We have a Kiowa cradle board, and this one is in Father Gear's collection, and we actually have our, his catalog here. And what we know about this piece is a Kiowa Indian cradle, and supposedly this is um, Kiki, Kike Hosea, fine beadwork. Um, so that's what the information he got for this cradle board. So there is a number on the bottom here of the cradle board um, and where it was um, put into the catalog. Um, but this one is very, it's very different from the one I've shown y'all. Um, this one actually has the beadwork on it. This would have taken a long time. Usually people ask, how long would that take? And I usually give them nine months. So they have nine months until the baby's born before they can put the baby in. But the straps are the same way. You would tie, untie it, put your baby in, and then slide it back through. So this one actually has a taller, this one's a little taller than the one I currently have, but it's about the same size. It just has a taller top on the wooden part up there. But same concept, used to protect your child. Um, this one is beautifully beaded. Um, this would have taken a lot of time, a lot of care went into designing this. There's, this one doesn't have the wood on top. It actually has a protective like hood over the very top instead of it being open. But the beadwork is great. There's um, pinks, blues, reds, turquoise, um, white, different trade beads on there. And what I really like about this piece is at the very top, it has some floral design work. And then of course the silver buttons put into the top. Some are missing, but it's an older piece. So it may have a couple of loose pieces on here but the same concept of um, the Navajo style cradle board. So. so mostly used to protect your child. So we're actually gonna come to a piece on this side. This is by Antoine Warrior, Sack and Fox. And we actually see a cradle board here. And this one's a little more similar to the one I showed y'all earlier with um, the Navajo style. This one just has a longer strap on top and it has these beads here, but that's how you would hold it. And so these, it looks like the grandmas are kind of um, babysitting the kids, the grandkids, so they're cooking, but instead of carrying the baby, they can have the baby up out of the way, sleeping and won't get hurt. Um, so that's kind of what we see here in kind of like a homestead. But this is by Antoine Warrior. He's Sack and Fox. Um, Antoine Warrior unfortunately passed in 2019. So we'll have to update his card um, at that point, but um, very well known here in Oklahoma. And we actually have one more cradle board to look at. And that's in this piece, Doc Tate Navacoya Comanche um, Tempera on board. This one actually has a cradle board in it. It's kind of hard to see but right here, it's on the back side. So she's carrying it like a backpack while she's riding on horseback. And that was another way to carry your child as well. So 
Um, we just wanted to go over these different pieces um, in our collection since I know a little more about baby cradle boards. Um, I have a brother that's 10 years younger than me. I remember tying him into a cradle board a couple of times. So um, it's just a very comforting way for your babies to sleep. You don't have to worry too much about them rolling off of something or getting into things. So I really enjoyed, um, as my mother said, being in a cradle board. So, but some kids don't. So it's just kind of one of those, they're either they like it or they don't. Um, but it all has a significant tradition and each tradition is different with every tribe that has cradle boards. There's different stories, um, different cultural um, expectations for them. So you can't just group them all together. So, um, but they were all used for babies. So, all right, if you have any other questions, just shoot us, your mess shoot us a message. Um, we would be happy to answer any of them. So we hope everyone has a good day.